Hello everyone, my name is Samar Lutfi and my colleagues are Isra Ahmed, Ghada Ahmed, Nurhan Mamdouh and Sar Mohammed. I'd like to talk to you about our interesting research on the oral drug delivery of protein. So, why there is a great challenge in improving the oral drug delivery of proteins? The oral delivery is the most common method of drug administration with high levels of patient acceptance. But administration of therapeutic proteins has been extremely difficult, increasing the bioavailability of protein drugs to the therapeutically acceptable level is a challenging goal because of the unsolved issues. But in general, oral administration is most preferred because of the various advantages over other routes of drug delivery, including the patient convenience, which increase the therapeutic efficacy of the drug. They are easier compared to the IV administration and they are also cheaper to produce because they do not need to be manufactured under sterile conditions. But they have also several unfavorable physiochemical probers such as large molecular size, susceptibility to the enzymatic degradation, poor stability in the gastric lobe pH environment, poor penetration of the intestinal membrane, short plasma half-life, immunogenicity and denaturation. Important efforts have already been focused on the designs for transport of proteins across mucous and intestinal barriers including enzyme inhibitors, absorption enhancers, mucoadhesive polymeric systems, derivatization or chemical modification and carrier systems. So first of all we talk about enzyme inhibitors. Proteins and polypeptides are subjected to peptidase inactivation, the GIT. So enzyme inhibitors are used to resist the enzyme degradation in stomach and intestine. And their examples are sodium glycocholate and chemostate mesylate. But they have side effects when used with chronic diseases. And about the absorption enhancers, they work by enhancing the bioavailability through increased membrane permeation. And their examples are biosols and fatty acids. But the available transport systems of proteins are undesirable molecules for the GIT. And this mean disadvantage. And about the mucoadhesive polymeric systems such as ketosan, polylactic coglycolic acid, Silated polymer and alginate, their effects include site-specific delivery and improved membrane permeation, but they have limitations due to the mucus turnover in the absorption sites, which mean the intestine. Then the derivatization or chemical modification of proteins and peptides. First, the derivatization is using the polyethylene glycol to protect from the enzymatic degradation and to improve the solubility. But the lipidization is used to improve the hydrophobicity of proteins and peptides. And finally, about the carrier systems, large number of carriers for proteins and peptides are used for oral drug delivery, such as emulsions, nanoparticles, microspheres, and liposomes, which have been used to protect the protein formulations against the harsh environment of the GIT, thus can improve their bioavailability. Many researchers use nanocarriers as strategies for oral drug delivery of insulin such as insulin plus ketosan coated nanoparticles, BLGA insulin nanoparticles, dextran insulin nanoparticles, polyalkyl cyanoacrylated insulin nanoparticles and we will focus on the solid lipid insulin nanoparticles which are new pharmaceutical delivery systems with an average diameter between 50 to 1000 nanometer. They have several applications in drug delivery and researches due to their unique size dependent progress and the attained by availability of the loaded drugs. And an example of the solid lipid nanoparticles is solid lipid nanoparticles modified by stearic acid octaarginine, which achieves a significant hypoglycemic effect with a maximum blood glucose lowering of 29.7% at one and a half hours compared to the insulin standard solution and it achieved pharmacological activity of about 13.86 plus or minus 0.79% compared to the insulin solution as a standard and according to the previous findings the steric acid octaarginine is a useful tool for delivering macro molecules. The emulsion solvent diffusion method is used in the preparation of solid lipid nanoparticles modified by stearic acid octaarginine, insulin is dissolved in 0 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid which consists of the inner aqueous phase and this phase has significant effect on the entrapment efficiency of insulin. Then, 
Acetone solution containing stearic acid and soybean phospholipids is added to form the oily phase. The resulting mixtures are dispersed for 15 seconds, leading to water and oil emulsion. The oily phase affects the size distribution of the insulin solid lipid nanoparticles. Then the emulsions are poured into polyxamer and steric acid octa-arginine solution under continuous stirring at 500 RBM for one hour in order to form the solid lipid nanoparticles. The untrapped drug and the adjuvant are removed by filtration and the formed solid lipid nanoparticles are filtered and euphilized. This is the main composition which reduces the degradation by pepsin to some extent so that the insulin remained is 54.7% after one hour compared to the insulin standard solution. Thus we can add carbonate buffer to improve the formulation stability in the stomach. The main composition also reduces the trypsin degradation so that the remained insulin is 25.7% at 4 hours. But this subjected to partial degradation due to harsh environment of the GIT. Thus, we can add ketosan and alginate coatings to protect the formulations. These are some suggestions for modifications of solid lipid nanoparticles modified by steric acid octaargon to reduce their degradation and to improve their bioavailability. I hope that our presentation were useful. Thank you for listening and goodbye.